Well, good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Fatima Khodadadi. I'm a new CE faculty at UC Riverside. Um, I've been working mainly on avocado and, and citrus diseases, wide range from fungal to viral diseases. You have any concern, feel free to reach out. You have any question, feel free to reach out. I have my business card over here on the table. Okay, today here I'm gonna cover some basics about Phytophthora root rot. Um, it's a disease that I'm sure you've all come across at least once or at least heard its name. Well, avocados are subject to many pests and diseases, um, but the most important disease is, is avocado root rot, uh, but that doesn't mean we should undermine the presence of other uh, diseases in, in your groves, like a Bacchusperia branch canker and dieback. Sambalage, avocado sambalage viroid that I personally call that a silent threat. Something, a disease which is around and many growers have been reached out since I started this position. And uh, I'm sure there are a lot of unknown aspects about this one that we should cover that in other, uh, hopefully, uh, growers meetings. Anyway, you wanna fight an enemy? Know it well first. What is Phytophthora? Phytophthora is actually a genus you know, comprised of more than 600 species. It's like a, a group of organisms, uh, microorganisms that are plant pathogens. They have a wide host range and the name Phytophthora has this Greek root means plant destroyer. So don't be surprised if you see such thing in your orchard, that's because of Phytophthora. So it's a you know, it resembles fungi, but it's not necessarily true fungi. There are, it, it, it mostly related to brown algae or a group of microorganisms called oomycetes. We call them water molds because they need water to complete their life cycle. So these pathogens, phytophthora, are soil borne, but there are differences between oomycetes and fungi. I don't want to get into the details of those differences, only the major component of the cell wall is cellulose, while in fungi we have chitin. So uh, these pathogens can produce some motile spores called zoospores, and they are water, uh, you know, waterborne. They can swim in the soil water interface and spread from one orchard, you know, to another through soil and also water. But Phytophthora, root rot caused by Phytophthora cinnamomi, it's a, it's a pathogen that has been you know, reported from more than 70 uh, countries since maybe 1920. It has an extremely wide host range, maybe more than 1000 varieties or, or uh, species of plants. But Phytophthora root rot it was first uh, maybe reported in, in the US in Puerto Rico in 1927, in California between 1920 to 1930. But uh, you know, it was isolated as Phytophthora cinnamomai in 1942. So how do you know do you have Phytophthora root rot in your orchard? It's, you know, the first signs of this disease are seen in the canopy. You see canopy decline, canopy thinning. That means leaves become um, uh, smaller, they become chlorotic with some uh, necrotic tips and later they drop. When they drop, then you see this framework of, of a bare canopy or, or thin canopy because shoots start die back from tips. Phytophthora root rot can gradually decline older trees but can really uh, kill those that are younger. And also it, it obviously you know, affects the yield of your trees and it affects the size of the fruits. But actually the cause is below the ground. If you dig you know, a few inches under the canopy, you will see the roots. So this pathogen is very much interested in fine feeder roots. So here in this picture, you see um, you know, normal feeder roots that are creamish to whitish color, but then to the right, you have those that are infected by Phytophthora root rot. So when the, the roots are, are infected by this pathogen, you usually either don't see feeder roots, and even if you see them, they are, you know, they get black and brittle, and at the end they die. Phyto, Phytophthora, you know, is not interested in major roots. Those pencil-sized roots is mainly, it, it mainly affects um, the fine feeder. 
So what happens when, when those feeder roots are gone, that they cannot, of course, do their job, which is water uptake, you know, nutrient uptakes, and that's why you see those typical symptoms in the canopy of the tree. Well, you know, this pathogen is, when it's established in your orchard, it's, it's very hard to get rid of that. Part of that is because it can produce these resting spores or, or um, survival spores, as I call them, like oospore or chlamydospores. Here in this picture, you see zoospores. They can swim in soil water interface and they can land on the root. In that picture to, the, to your right, when they land on the root or attach to the root, then they insist, they lose those flagella that they have and they grow intercellularly inside the root. And at the end, again, when they kill the root, the sprangia would form and release those spores again. But this pathogen, um, sometimes when the conditions become unfavorable, then they have this ability to produce thick walled spores called oospore when two different strains mate with each other and also chlamydospore. These two spores stay in the soil for maybe years. So that's why it's hard to get rid of this pathogen. Let's take a look at the disease cycle, what happens in the interaction with avocado or any other plant host. As I mentioned, when zoospores are released in water, they can swim, they can you know, attach to the roots, infect them, kill them, and produce again zoospore, uh, sprangia and zoospore. And sometimes they can produce oospore and chlamydospore. But how does this pathogen or this disease spread from one orchard to another? If Phytophthora root rot is not native to your orchard and you're establishing a new orchard, the disease is not there. So the, the maybe major factor responsible for introducing this pathogen to your, um, to your orchard is the nursery stock. So always make sure that you're using certified free, you know, uh, disease-free nursery materials. So those nurserymen should be mindful of, of using you know, good seeds, clean seeds. They, can, they have their own uh, ways of cleaning, use clean water, infest the soils, or just practice simple hygiene uh, or, or sanitation methods. That's how you, you know, it can make a huge difference in your orchard. But if it's there, you know, it can spread through anything which is in contact with, with, uh, with the soil, like your shoes, kids are playing there, any tools that you're using, your shovels, your ladders, picking boxes, doesn't matter. Whatever is in touch with that infected soil can spread the pathogen from one orchard to another. Or irrigation water, if that's infected, that can also spread the pathogen. But then let's get to the management, how to really control it. So here's the thing, really, there is no way to eradicate the pathogen when it's established in your orchard. It's in the soil, but you can mitigate, you can reduce by using an integrated approach, you know, a combination of cultural uh, methods, uh, chemical methods, or using tolerant or resistant food stocks. For cultural practices, make sure that you manage your irrigation. That's the number one factor to control phytophthora root rot because it's a soil-borne pathogen and it requires water to complete their life cycle, to swim, to spread. So that's why water management or irrigation management is very important. Apply gypsum or mulch, you know, provide favorable, favorable soil conditions. Use a, a cinnamon, phytophthora cinnamon white tolerant root stocks or, you know, prevent any soil or water movement from infested areas. Again, let me emphasize on irrigation because you know, soil moisture is like a two-edged sword for phytophthora root rot. If you have high moisture soil, of course, that can help developing the disease, uh, you know, the, the, the forming a sporangia and, and releasing zoospore that can swim. And of course, the, the disease would, would develop there. But there is another, um, you know, on the other hand, if you have low moisture in your soil and you have a lot of, of course, salt in your soil, then that can cause roots to exude some substances that attract more zoospores and more the cause of this pathogen to the roots. That's why it's important, neither over water nor under water. Always, you know, be, be mindful about your irrigation, reduce the amount of water for disease trees and schedule irrigation frequency and amount of water that you're using. It would be good to even 
monitor the soil moisture using some methods like maybe installing some tensiometers in your orchards. And also make sure that water that you're using has a good quality free of boron, sodium, and chloride. Well, mulching is good. You all know it's good for avocado growth, but part of that is because it can retain water. It can regulate the moisture. It can regulate the temperature. It can add, it can increase the organic matter in the soil. And how mulching, you know, can help fight off controlling phytophthora root rot, it actually increases the microbial community in the soil. So those microbes actually feed on mulches because mulches, you know, provide cellulose for them in a way. Those microbes can also eat phytophthora and kill phytophthora because as I mentioned, phytophthora also has cellulose in its cell wall. So mulching is general good because it can increase biological and physical properties of the soil. Other thing you could do, of course, use gypsum, which is you know, calcium sulfate, apply a thin layer, maybe 20 pound, 25 pounds under the canopy of each medium sized tree. What it does, it actually adds calcium to the soil, which is good for the growth. It can remove the excess sodium from the soil. It can suppress the formation of phytophthora spores and make the soil more porous and allow air and water and other nutrients penetrate the soil better. But after, after the gypsum, of course, you can now have a layer of, of, of mulch, four to six inches of coarse wood chip mulch and keep the mulch a little bit away from the base of the tree or the trunk. Um, besides all the, you know, uh, uh, all the benefits that I talk about, mulching is also can, uh, because the roots of avocado grow to, this, to the surface, mulching can add another layer of protection for the roots from too much heat or too much cold. Soil management is important. Again, I mentioned that. So make sure that you have a good drainage system in your soil. Simply mounding is really good because it can uh, improve the drainage in the soil. The other method, which is good, you all know, always use clonal root stocks and seedling root stocks. And you know, avocado breeding program has released some uh, and introduced some root stock already. We have Duke Seven, we have Dusa right now, which is pretty common in California. Always has um, uh, grafted on it. And it provides very good tolerance against phytophthora root rot. As I mentioned, when it's established, it's hard to eradicate, but you know, there are some chemicals out there that can really help, but of course, in combination with other methods. For instance, phosphite-based products under different labels and names are out there in the market. They're good against phytophthora. You know, all brands on the market work equally well. Um, but uh, they, they registered as fertilizer because, I don't know, maybe it's easier to register them as fertilizer than, than fungicide, but they're good against, against phytophthora. They can stimulate a defense response in the tree. So the tree can actually produce its own antifungal chemicals, and then those chemicals can kill phytophthora. But directly also, they can reduce spore germination and growth rate. Well, depending on the label or the formula or product that you're using, you can either spray it, you can inject it to the trunk or the vascular tissue, or you can just, you know, uh, inject it to the irrigation water that you're using. Spraying on the bark is not really that good for phytophthora root rot, but it is good for phytophthora mangy, which causes uh, trunk canker and crown rot. So speaking of Phytophthora mangy, I just want to briefly talk about this disease also besides Phytophthora root rot. You know, usually in your orchard, you can see these two together, but this pathogen, this species actually targets the lower trunk. And um, unlike Phytophthora root rot, it doesn't affect the feeder roots. It, 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 it usually affects the major roots and you don't see that tag horning or, or dieback for this disease or you see the gradual decline of the tree, of course. And the same pathogen um, causes fruit rot, phytophthora fruit rot, which is phytophthora mangy. Whatever that you do for phytophthora root rot would be also beneficial to control this disease in your orchard. Okay, what message take home today? When phytophthora is there, you cannot eradicate it, but what you could do use a combination of different methods like 
I don't know, cultural methods that I talked about, or, or using some chemicals, you know, there is a newly registered, uh, you know, chemical that Dr. Alice Cabbage would cover today. So make sure that you use a combination of all these methods to, to control this one. But the number one factor is irrigation, as I mentioned, because it's a waterborne pathogen. It's important to irrigate carefully. Well, uh, thank you for listening. This is uh, my information. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. My business card is over there. Feel free to take. And uh, here's the address for my blog, Subtropical Plant Pathology. You don't find much information now, but it will come with time. Thank you. If you have any questions, I will be happy to answer. You know, it depends on, sure, the question is whether gypsum help removing sodium from the soil or not. So adding, adding gypsum, yes, would re Here's the thing, here's the thing about gypsum. When you add gypsum, you're actually adding more calcium and that calcium can, can replace sodium, can, can push it a little bit down to the, to the deeper layer of the soil. Of course, you need a lot of water to, you know, to get that salt away from the root system. But like uh, generally speaking, uh, a gypsum, if you use it in moderation, of course, the way that it was recommended would help with, with salinity. Should help. Thank you, Pablo. No problem.